Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, what I'm hoping will be a very quick little Bluetooth speaker repair here. Um, I, can't, I like doing these if I'm honest. I don't make a huge amount of money on them or anything, but I think they're good practice and it's a... Uh, I like fixing gadgets like this because there's too much stuff like this that gets broken and thrown out with stuff that's just really not difficult to repair. And it's nice just to save gadgets like this. Usual drill, um, charger jack is knackered. Uh, so this guy is completely mashed up in there. You can see the pins are all mashed into the back. Uh, very common fault. This is a really nice Bluetooth speaker. It looks super cool. I like it. Um, it's quite a heavy one as well. Um, the only the interesting thing, it's got a charge output on it, which is kind of cool. It's only one amp, so that's not going to charge your phone, but I mean, it might be enough just to stop a power loss if it's sitting and playing music all day. You could charge some small widgets like smartwatches or something like that. I've already had a sneaky look in this one just because I wasn't sure how much of a deal it was going to be to open up. And what happens is you take off this plastic surround at the back comes off. So I've already got it loosened and I basically just need to pry this up with some prying tools. It's very, it's a very, very tight fit. It's, that's all that's holding it in, just an interference fit. So you just need to shuffle it out. It's like a box with a very close fitting lid on it. You have to walk it out evenly and it will start moving. Uh, as you can see, we've got the back off. And firstly, the reason why I think this video is going to be short and sweet is like, look, that board is just accessible. Two screws and that's going to come out. This is going to be a doddle. Touch wood. <laughs> Touch wood. Uh, however, this compartment here, I bet this has got the battery in it. So I'm going to have a little sneaky look in here. There we go. Got a nice little connector at the bottom. There we go. Uh, oh, it's a 7.4 volt. Oh, fair enough. Okay, that is um, that's high. That's bigger than I gave it credit for. However, I like the design of this because, as you can see, it's actually very modular and very uh, well. Actually, I'll leave that disconnected because I can. It's easy to take out the bits that you care about uh, while the rest of the speaker enclosure remains sealed. I'm not saying that this was made to be repaired, but this is something that is not, um, at the very least, it's not something that's been designed to be irreparable, which is, a, I feel like, a small blessing these days. All right, can we get this guy out? Trying to figure out where I can grab hold of this thing from. Ooh. You know, I might speak... Oh, I think I spoke too soon. There's this cable here and that wider one at the back. And the wider one at the back has no slack on it. You can see I'm actually already straining that, trying to pull out the connector. How are we going to get that out without breaking it? Oh, we would... Oh, we were doing so well! I'm rapidly wanting to take back all the praise I've just given this thing. Okay, right. Let's go in deeper. We have some screws here. So I guess we're going to undo some screws and the front of the enclosure will come off. Um, and that will give us access to more. Okay, well, for a moment I thought this was going to be like a five minute video. But I don't think it is now. Let's keep going. I feel, I feel a screw down here. I'm now wondering if I should have started this video now because I'm sort of doing this between other jobs. Because I thought, oh, this will be a nice quick one. And it will be another video that I'll have in the queue ready for next week. Yep, I'm finding more screws down all these holes. Screws in holes like this are the main reason why... I always say, make sure you've got a set of actual, like, 80 mil, well, like 50 or longer millimeter screwdrivers instead of having a um, uh, a multi-bit set. Because a multi-bit set don't fit down recessed holes. 
Um, I mean, I suppose a lot of them these days do have extensions on them, which alleviates the problem slightly. But this is why I like to use separate screwdrivers, because then the problem just doesn't exist at all. There we go. Eight, six. Right, I think that's all of them out. What's, is anything moving? Does the front come off? Yeah, something's happening there. It didn't fall off because we're going into the speaker enclosure now, so this will be sealed to keep the pressure in. In order to make these tiny little speakers so effective, they have a sealed chamber and then they use these resonators at the back which are remarkably effective when i first saw these in the early you know in some of the earlier videos when i first started working on bluetooth speakers i was like oh that's a gimmick um however yeah i i have they really work man uh, oh there we go all right oh no Oh, this is terrible, man. Okay, let's disconnect this first. God, look at the size of those drivers. Those are some big, chunky boys. This thing's probably awesome. Massive hacking things. For the size, anyway. I don't know if this thing's any good. It might not be. It might be crap. It's heavy enough to be good, though. Weight is usually a good sign. <laughs> right. Uh, they have hot glued that wiring completely um, to seal it. I mean, I guess I can do the same thing, but it means I'm going to have to dig out all that hot glue because that won't come out without breaking. Um, I mean, I guess that's the only way to seal it, but oh, that's such a pity, man. I think they wanted to make something that was serviceable and modular. But they kind of didn't... I, I think then they were just like, oh, well, there's a, there's a wire going through there, so it needs to be sealed. But then, like, this one isn't sealed. So, you know, I mean, it, it's got a seal around there, but why couldn't they have done the same thing over here? And, uh, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's an interesting thing or not. I think it's kind of interesting. Let's see what we can do about this. Um, so let's disconnect that cable from that end, if I can. And pull it out from there. And I can disconnect this one as well. And then what we're going to have to do is dig out all that hot glue to get the cables out. And then afterwards, I'll have to put it back in and get my glue gun and hot snot the whole thing up again in order to reseal it. Come on, there we go. Plastic surround was trying to go there. Right, so those cables are now free except for the hot glue. So what's an effective way to get that out? I could dig it out, it's gonna be a chore. I wonder if there's a... Um, I wonder if there is a, a, something you can use that easily dissolves or melts this without making a colossal mess everywhere. I wonder if I could use my hot air station just to heat all of that up enough that I can pull the cable through. I'm almost tempted to actually experiment with that and just see what happens. Don't know if I want to do that on a... I don't know if I want to test that theory on a customer repair though. Tell you what, I'm going to quickly try that and just see what happens. I'm curious. How how plausible is that? Let's go for, I don't know, 250 degrees and just see what that does. I'm just going to try it on a section of the glue. That's very effective. That's very effective. I think that's going to work. This is probably going to give off a lot of noxious fumes, so I'm going to do my best not to breathe them in. Um, now I've got the problem where I need to hold everything together. I need to hold this while I pull on this, while I hot air this. Uh, 
I guess I could push it through. That might work. I think that might be the most effective. I'll try that, and I'm going to have the whole thing resting on uh, this um, captain tape reel, just so there's a gap for it to push out from. Because if I'm pushing into the desk, then obviously it won't come out. Let's try that. Uh, let's adjust the camera so you guys can hopefully see it happen. Yeah, we're melting the glue like a tree, but it's not pushing through. So I need a better a better way. I need like a an actual proper bench vice or something like that. Something big, but I don't have a big vice. I've only got a tiny little vice for holding little things. I think I might have to step this out. That'll do it. Whew. All right, so that's just come out like that. Okay, let's take a closer look at what we've done there and just assess any potential damage. So, I strained that connector. This connector does not unplug, but I haven't broken it, so that's okay. No harm, no foul. Um, the wire is undamaged. It did stand up to the heat. Um, so that worked a treat. Uh, we're not going to be able... Oh, there we go. I've just actually... The plug has just actually become dislodged. Oh, this is all still molten. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, that's a nice plug, actually. That would be quite easy to glue back in place again afterwards. We've just melted that all to hell. That's all still liquid and goopy. Um... It would be nice to be able to pull all of this through. I wonder if I can do that. Ugh. I'm just kind of smushing everything at the moment, and I'm... Okay. Uh, the the sort of... The, the felt seal has come apart there, but that doesn't really matter. Um, the important thing is, is that this is airtight when we're done. So I'll actually just peel that off. Okay, let's put that through. One. And that's two. There we go. Ugh, what a fiasco. Whew. All right. We've got our board out. Now we can actually look to replace that USB connector. Uh, we haven't damaged any of this, so this is good. Um, the only challenge will be when we put it all back in and we've got to reseal that. Um, I'll, tr I'll put this seal back in and then basically we'll just get the hot glue gun and just go across the whole thing. Because that's basically what they did in the factory. <laughs> right, I've got this guy all viced up. Um, we're at a slightly weird angle just because when I come in with the hot air, I want to dodge the auxiliary jack and this connector here. So I'm, I'm going to come in at this angle. So let's get the hot air going again. This time I'm going to go up to um, going to go up to 400 degrees, which should be adequate. And I need a pair of tweezers. And we're just going to heat and then lift that guy out. Preferably without destroying it in the process, just so I can see what kind of connector it is. Here we go. Easy, easy. All right, so there's our connector. I'm going to go and get my collection of replacement ports, and we'll see if we can find a match. Right, do any of my oddball ones match first of all that would be a no ah that looks like a good one still a little bit of a shorter boy no i don't have a match for that that's a bummer uh fine let's jump on ebay and I'm going to start with just Mali Bluetooth speaker USB port. There we go. That's not advertised as being for the Mali, but it's come up and the picture matches. Sometimes 
you need to know the technical term for what you're looking for. And sometimes if you just ask the search engine what you want, it'll tell you straight away. That's it. That's blatantly it. I'll buy two of them. One for the repair, one for a spare in case I cock it up, and also the other spare I can put into my collection in case we get another one of these. That'll do. All right, we're back, and I've got some new USB ports, and we now need to clear up these holes and tidy up the pads. So in an ideal world, we want to have some nice clear holes so I can just drop the new USB port in, and then I've just got to touch it all up with a soldering iron. Um, so this is always the difficult bit for me. Um, uh, I'm going to try and use my desoldering gun. Uh, my regular viewers will know that my desoldering gun has been broken lately. However, I have fixed it. Um, there, there were loads of really helpful comments uh, in the last video where I mentioned that my desoldering gun was blocked um, because I was trying to get a new nozzle for it. That didn't go very well. Um, however, in the end, I drilled it out. Uh, I bought a one. I bought some one millimeter drill bits and just drilled out the block, the blockage, and that worked a treat. So this guy should be uh, back in the land of the living now. Oh, look at that. Magic. I forgot not to use flux on this, though. The desoldering gun, it doesn't like flux. It makes it sort of smoke horridly. Doesn't matter, that worked a treat though. Look at that, that's fantastic. Right, now I'll warm up the soldering iron. We'll just touch up those joins there, and then I can just drop my new um, uh, my new USB port into place. So uh, if you don't have a desoldering gun, which if you're DIYing, you probably don't, um, then your next best friend, uh, in my opinion, is probably to try and find yourself some decent quality solder wick. My solder wick is a bit crap, um, and so it requires a bit of method to use. Uh, or you can hot air him. Um, it is entirely possible with blocked holes just to put the USB port in place, hot air it, and just get in and out before you melt the port. Um, but uh, again, for that reason, I always recommend buying a couple of replacement ports just in case you mess one up. So yeah, this, when you're making videos like this, it's difficult. I have to decide, you know, who is this video for? You know, because it, you, if I were aiming at professionals who have lots of solder e equipment, they already know how to do this. So I guess they're just watching for the pleasure of watching stuff get fixed. Um, if I'm making it for DIYers, DIYers probably don't have lots of equipment, which is why I try to avoid using exotic equipment when I can. But at the same time, uh, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it's also good just to demonstrate what's out there, I guess. Make of that what you will. Right, so here's our replacement port, and that should just drop straight in there now. Yeah, look at that. So, uh, I'm going to flip this over. Let's see. I'm going to touch up just one of the anchors from underneath, I think. Because if I flip it over, it'll fall out. So I'm just going to get in some solder on one connection just to hold that in place. There we go. Right, now we know that that is dead straight and it is flat on the board. So I'm going to turn this around now so I can get to the back. Whoop. And it's a little bit awkward to get onto the back of this port because we've got these cables coming up here. It would be nice to remove those, but they don't unplug. You actually have to desolder them, which is exceedingly inconvenient. <clears throat> so I'll now swap out to my pine sill, which has got a BC2 tip on it. So we've got the small boy tip now to go onto there. 
Uh, so let's warm this guy up. All right, uh, let's get a little bit of flux in there. Just a little bit is all we need. And here comes the bad soldering. Try not to melt these wires. This is fairly straightforward because I tinned those pads, so I should just have to reflow this all now. And the objective when doing this is you've got to make sure that you heat the pin itself as well as the pad because otherwise you've got the pin sitting on top of the solder not with the solder flowing onto it and gripping it and you get a dry joint in there which might work it just won't be very good but it's harder than it looks to get this right which is why I do so much practice on these Bluetooth speakers um, doing micro ports on Bluetooth speakers is a great way to start practicing the smaller stuff and I tend to say this every time but whatever right that's a good looking finish there I think Let's just put my soldering iron down I do need two holders for my soldering iron yeah that looks good it looks a little bit blobby from here because the flux is all over around it. But I'll clean that up and that'll be good enough. They're a little bit spiky, but sometimes less is more. They're on. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Those anchors don't go very far through the holes. So I'm just going to absolutely flood these holes with solder. Just to make sure they're gripping nicely. Yeah, that's gone all the way up through to the top side. That's nice. So the only failure mode for this will be if the center pin gets mashed again. Not because uh, we've torn it off of the pads. Yeah, that's all right. I'm happy with that. Now we've got to put it back in the speaker again. So, I will... which way round did this go? Went that way round. So, we've got to feed those cables back in. Ugh. Everything has got remnants of hot glue on it and it's sticky and horrid and bleh. Another screw. Okay, right, so now that can slot back into there. And these guys stick up here. So I'm going to go and grab my hot glue gun so I can get that warming up. So if we stick that bit of foam in there, that fills most of the gap. And we've just got a hot snot all around there now. All right, you ready to go? I think we're ready to go. Doesn't need to be particularly neat and tidy, this. It wasn't before. It just needs to seal. Bit in the there, I guess. There we go. I'm not going to worry too much about these strings going everywhere. We can pull all of those off. Right, one and done. How are we doing? That's probably enough that I can start plugging things in. So, which way round did this go? We've got two pegs there, two pegs there, so that goes that way up. What say you now? Boink! There we go. We have a charge light. And it is pulling current. So that is pulling 800 milliamps there. In case anyone's curious, this is a cool thing I've got here. Um, it's 
by a brand called AO Coda, um, and it's got a uh, XT60 jack at one end, which you can plug hobby LiPo batteries into, and it gives you a USB output. So it basically turns any hobby battery into a power bank. It's not very good because this, it, like the screen is not very verbose and it's only got a one button interface. But so it's a bit janky, but also it's kind of neat just because it means that if you have a couple of um, LiPo batteries kicking around, you can convert any one of them into an instant power bank. Uh, and some, for some hobby batteries, that might actually end up being quite a large power bank you have on hand there. Good, that is charging. Let's turn it on. Powering on. Powering on. That sounded very muffled. Not surprising, though. So I'll just leave that sticking out slightly. So this should sound positively awful. Uh, I will pair it to my phone. There we go. I've been digging Thomas Hood again recently. Really cool dude. Check him out on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description below. So that has got absolutely no beef at all with the covers off. However, if I now put the enclosure on. Did you hear that? That was amazing. It's almost like sound engineers know what they're doing. That's super cool. All right, it works. Right, and there we go, we're all finished with that. So, uh, good fix, that. Um, this was not the hardest Bluetooth speaker I've worked on, but almost frustrating, because this was almost one of the easiest ones I've worked on. Um, so it could have been good. It's an interesting design, though. Um, I just wish they'd make these modular so you could fiddle with them and put bigger batteries in them and stuff like that. I think that'd be really cool. But whatever, I hope you guys found that interesting. As always, my support links are down in the description below for my Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks all. See you soon. Bye.